All right, everybody, welcome back to this incredible copy of The Incredible Hulk, number 181. Uh, this is after two treatments of the blue LED on the front cover and uh, two treatments on the back cover. And you can see it already looks a lot better. The colors are a lot brighter. But if we come in here in that H, you can still see some foxing. And if we look in that K, there's still some pretty intense foxing. Um, and the same is kind of true on the back. So up here, particularly, there's a really dark spot. And down here, we've got a little bit of these dark spots. So I'm going to continue treating this with the, with the blue light. But because these spots are so much darker than some of the rest of the uh, surrounding area, what I want to do is try to even them out. So I'm going to do a little bit of quick spot hopping here uh, on those very localized little little areas and you want to be really careful because it is possible to um, remove some gloss and CGC will um, ding that as a defect in the grade. And so what I'm going to do is take my spot hop mixture here. This again is 1.5% um, hydrogen peroxide so it's the stuff you get from the store. Uh, in this case I have the Meyer brand handy and I dilute that 50-50 with distilled water and it looks like I'm still working on this jug that we got from whoever Good and Gather uh, distributor is. But it's just distilled water. Um, and I, you know, do 50 50 to make it the mixtures. I happen to have bought a graduate cylinder off of Amazon. So these are 100 milliliters. So I think uh, this is about a 250 milliliter bottle. So I just give it, you know, one, one full graduate of both both varieties. I've got a sheet of regular paper underneath. This is just regular printer paper. And then uh, I have my Hangar 9 tacking iron here set to 1.5 on the dial. And you can see it kind of blotting through there. And we're just going to give it like a 10 banana. Maybe closer to a 5 banana. We just kind of want to see that drop kind of dry. And it's very important when doing this that you do not crank the, uh, the dial on the iron. That'll definitely be the biggest cause of a problem. And I'm going to give it a few seconds here every time I give it a little bit of a dab, um, just to make sure I'm not, you know, I'm getting time to soak in and kind of absorb into the stain. And this thing has actually came with the hanger iron, but I end up using it for my Q-tip. Um, remember the days when people used to have ashtrays, it's kind of the same idea for my Q-tip. Just gonna check that out every few seconds. You don't need a lot of pressure. You know, we're just gently using the heat from the iron to try to dry out that spot. And the, after applying the peroxide, a little bit of heat there will cause some of the chemical reactivity. And uh, you know, we're not ever gonna make it be perfect here again. So that's the other secret to the the spot hop. We're not going to try to go the full mile. What we're trying to do is just you know, hit it 75, 80, 90 percent, somewhere in there, and that way the blue LED can um, do a little bit more. I was curious, sometimes these really dark, intense foxing spots do clean up with the blue LED right off the bat, but if I'm two treatments in and there's that much intensity, um, it's time to, uh, time to do a quick spot hop here. This I'm going to leave. That should continue to clean up with a couple more light treatments, so... I prefer, if at all possible, to avoid these spot hops. This is the technique that is both incredibly powerful, but it also does cause the most color lift and gloss damage that I see when, when doing these techniques. And so, um, yeah, you want to be very, very careful with that. <sighs> but super happy with how this book is coming out so far. You know, it is, uh, it's made a lot of progress for only a couple of treatments. I think in the original video I said I thought this was going to be a 16 treatment book, four on the front cover, four on the back cover, and then four on each of the interior covers. So we're only about four of those 16 treatments in right now, and we've already got a lot of progress being made on the book. You can see it's lightening up there. Uh, the, the foxing, I've never seen anything transfer. So like if you have tide lines or stains, sometimes uh, like in the other video I had, um, you could see those 
transfer to the overlay sheet and we got all the lines and stuff. Uh, with foxing, I don't see that. So I think part of the reason is these are supposed to be uh, iron minerals and I think you're changing the oxidation state and the coordination sphere and they just dissolve into the water and they become colorless. So uh, unlike some of the tannins that stay that dark, deep brown color. All right, so that'll probably do it for the front. Like I said, you know, we don't need to go too far. And if that spot ends up staying there long term, I would not be surprised. That might end up being the grid determining stain, as it were, which would be unfortunate, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. I got a new sheet of paper that one managed to acquire some crud on it. Back cover here has a lot of uh, light spots. And so these, again, you don't want to get too carried away because we're going to do some extra treatments downstairs in the, the light box anyway. So we'll just take these kind of darkest spots here and just dab them a little bit with water. You know, we're not going to do anything too crazy here. These might just be a couple of piece. The one up top is really the one that that's the most worried about. <clears throat> and I've seen books as high as 9092 with light foxing. So a little bit being left over is not a problem. I'd rather leave a, a very, very trace amount on there than get overboard and damage the book or cause some other permanent damage. And as you can see, this is a pretty pokey process, so it definitely is not something that you just sit down and do in a few seconds. It usually takes a little bit. For some books, I can end up doing this for over a half hour, just going spot to spot to spot, real light. Trying to dab them all. It's definitely a very pokey process. It's one of the reasons why I charge a little bit more for stain removal than I'm sure some people would like. But it... Um, takes a lot of time and it's not the kind of thing you can automate or not pay attention to. You kind of got to be on your toes the whole time. As I'm pulling the overlay off, you know, I'm trying to be very careful to listen for any cracking or sticking feeling. Because again, you can end up damaging a book real easy. All you have to do is gently nudge, kind of hit that dial and knock it up to a two by accident. Or if you oversaturate your spots. You can end up with micro creasing is a very common problem. If you're doing it on color, you'll notice none of these spot hops are on color. I picked the white area on that lettering on the front cover and we're doing this all around the perimeter here. But if you're doing this on color, you can have uh, some serious, serious color lift. Especially when the paper fibers are wet, you want to be very careful with how you're moving the paper around on the interior. It's very easy to separate fibers that would normally be quite sturdy when they're wet. Same thing is true around staples. So if you're doing any of the misting methods, very careful with the area around the staples when that paper's wet. It's very easy to inadvertently separate something. Again, it might not look like we're doing a whole lot, <clears throat> might not look like we're accomplishing anything, but believe me, when that blue LED treatment goes the next time around, it's going to have a lot better chance at evening these spots out. 
better diluted color. You'll know it's very easy to see very little bits of color or discoloration. It's really hard to fully bleach it out. So we're trying to get a majority out here so that the blue LED can mop up the last little, little bit. find with foxing that the overlay method is by far and away better than misting for foxing removal. It really does work better. All right, we're going to do a couple more here on this really intense spot on the top. I'll probably be done on the bottom. So you can see I got a little bit of sticking there. So if you get sticking, what I always do is just roll over that paper. And it comes right off, if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, you'll pull gloss and ink. But at that time, I think it was a really light stick. I'm just going to try to get this spot a little bit wider right across the top edge. Alright, this will probably be the last one, especially if we're seeing evidence of sticking. If I'm more organized, I try to do this live and field questions while I'm sitting here. Make it more entertaining for you all. Definitely not that organized, though. Alright, there you go. So to me, you know, this area looks a lot better now. Area down here, maybe not so much, but we will uh, we'll keep treating this, and hopefully, it'll uh, it'll keep improving. You know, the front cover got two treatments here downstairs, and uh, a little bit of spot hopping. Maybe we can give it one more spot hop here under this K. It looks pretty intense yet. Pretty intense. I'm actually going to try to treat the interior. You can see that it does have some pretty dark, intense spotting right down here. So I'm going to try to. Try to do that from the interior out. Um, one thing you never want to do is put water on both the inside and the outside at the same time. Do not do that. I'm going to use the dry end of the q-tip here just to keep that moisture as much off the black as possible. Give it a few seconds to soak in as much as you can. Pretty intense staining here on the K. But unfortunately it is front and almost center.
and trying to control that humidity so it's really just the water in that particular area where that more intense staining is. It's a pretty stubborn little spot. Sticking. Yeah, we'll do one more. that'll be it for this we'll see how this checks out after another couple of blue led treatments uh the good news is you can always come back and do this after those as long as it's before the final press so if we decide we want to modify anything we got another opportunity to play with it all right we're checking back in here on this incredible copy of the incredible hulk number 181 this thing looked disgusting when we started but we were able to give it a pretty thorough dry clean after cracking out out of its cgc 6.5 case um, and we were really concerned with some of the foxing that was up here as well as the really intense spot in the k and if you look really in close as i kind of predicted even after multiple treatments that really intense spot still does have a little bit of grossness there that was after spot hopping and this book had got four front cover treatments and four interior front cover treatments so a total of eight treatments uh, to try to address that spot and then I did one follow-up treatment where I dabbed uh, peroxide on that spot so that spot has been uh, you know hit with everything I got and that's about as good as I think it's going to get without risking some other more serious damage to the book, including color loss or ink fading or, you know, some other things. So as you can see in general, it's a pretty nice copy. We have some of these spine ticks will look better after the press. Um, the corners are all really clean. We've gotten rid of all of that, you know, discoloration and grossness especially in the big swoosh here. So that looks really nice. The interior cover also looks really nice. Oh, by the way, it has that characteristic wrinkle of being done here down in the, the light box. So that'll flatten out after the press. But you can see the interiors now are incredibly smooth. They look not necessarily brand new, but very bright. The back cover is the same. You know, there might be a little bit of discoloration up here, but in general, this thing looks uh, amazing compared to what it did beforehand. So this is the power of the blue LED light treatment technique. Um, so in this case, I did a lot of what we call bled O technique. Uh, specifically, I think we have Chris Trump at the Captain Mike Facebook group to thank for this. He's one of the main pioneers that helped out and all the secrets are revealed in the comic book stand removal and whitening book. So check that out, join the Captain Mike. A YouTube channel to be able to figure out how to make your own light box and feel free to join the Facebook group for some extra um, insights and, and questions asked. So that would be my advice to you. Uh, again, the interior cover here looks uh, really nice. So we're going to go ahead and flatten this out in a final press and then we'll come on back and see what it looks like. All right, one final check in here with this incredible copy of The Incredible Hulk number 181. What I wanted to show you in the glare is now we have smoothed out this book so it no longer has that wrinkled look to it and you can see it is pretty sharp. So there's the one spine tick that was quite bulging after the uh, blue LED treatments. It's still there in the glare um, but you can see you know down the spine if you remember the original video looked almost leopard spotted due to how uh, gross it looked. The Hulk now looks bright. We've still got very small residual amount of that foxing there. And if you compare this to the original video, this back cover looks immaculate. Remember, it was just completely filthy. It was scuzzy. It was heavily foxed. 
It was just absolutely a train wreck. And so we've been able to really touch this up. It has wonderful glare and sheen now across it. It's free of all kinds of heavy creasing. I'm pretty optimistic this one's going to come in. You know, my heart would throb if it came back a 9.0 because that would be a 2.5 grade increase. Um, realistically, I think they're going to hit it at an 8.5. But we'll see how... Um, how we actually do. And uh, just so you get an idea of how I send really nice books to CGC here, I have my two millimeter uh, fullback E. Gerber uh, board. And what I'm gonna do is slide this in here upside down uh, <clears throat> and try to line the book up on the board. And then again, I'm gonna push on the board, not on the book to get it situated as far down as I can go. Flip it over very gently. I've got my electrical tape here. always do this on a flat hard surface and then I have the this is the quote standard size which as you can see fits a uh, book like this perfect it's right about the right size for a silver age this is the silver slash golden age and it is significantly larger uh, and so typically I'll do these um, front to front so that the, the backer board is um, you know, sandwiching the book. In this case, the owner wants to take a quick peek at this before it gets mailed off. So I'm gonna do it this way um, so that you can see it through there. But the important thing is that it still has that border all the way around of the full backboard here, which I'll show you in a minute. And so to me, the important thing is making sure you have kind of this double fat full back, uh, you know, edge and you've got really nice protection on that corner. And the same thing is true up here. So we've got, you know, double, double full back. So that one is nice and uh, ready for CGC. We'll see what they say about it. I'm super excited to be able to post uh, this video when it comes home. Take care, everybody. All right, the grade is in. CGC has delivered the Hulk 181 that I've been working on to the owner. Uh, it's not my book, so unfortunately I can't show you the actual slab here. All I have is a picture from the owner. And drum roll, please. Ba -da 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 -da. There it is. 9.0 white pages. So that is the end result of our hard work is converting the CGC 6.5 off-white white pages to this now beautiful and upgraded copy of the Hulk 181 9.0 through extensive cleaning and foxing removal. Um, what you'll notice is the really dark spot here down on the Hulk stayed. So if we zoom in there, you can see those exact um, dark spots there that kind of resisted even our deepest cleaning on the K and the Hulk. And so that's our, our indication it's the same issue. And with that, this journey is done. So I'm calling it a wrap. Thank you for your attention and following both parts of the journey here. And uh, I'll look forward to posting a couple more of these as we go from, you know, slab to, to new slab and see how we do. So take care. Uh, please give a like, thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, etc., etc. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. By the way, the full before and after pictures are posted both on Facebook and Instagram. Take care, everybody.